Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. This is the Lightning Review Part 1, one of the new characters released this week for the Final Fantasy XIII collaboration. A lot of you already really enjoyed me cosplaying as Snow was the last one, so without fail, I also have to obviously cosplay Lightning too, right? It's a character that a lot of people have been excited for for various reasons, and I obviously am too to some degree as well. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm not actually going to do that the whole video. Definitely a unit you should look forward to. Overall, it does a lot of things genuinely really well, so let's talk about how and why. Now, part one, part two, and part three. Today we're going over the character overview, the base and total stat analysis that range anywhere from crit hit and avoid to accuracy and evasion, and then the final report card with parts two and three coming shortly upon her release when I can finally really get to know her AI and the damage limits and her overall survivability in the global side of things as opposed to just the JP. But for now, let's get into the character overview. So brand new lightning unit. They gave her the Knight of Flash main job with the sniper and Viking sub jobs. She equips swords, hats, clocks, and accessories with a move of three jump of one as a 90 cost unit. Now she is a unit that you'll probably have at 50 faith the majority of times. So the resistance data elements here don't need to worry yourselves too much about, but from the weapon type resistances, she does skew actually a little heavier on the magic resistance side here, 20% to magic with 10% to both slash and missile. The only negative being the minus 10% to strike, which isn't a, a deal breaker by any means with neutral damage to pierce. So overall, it starts off in a pretty decent place from weapon type resistances. When we get into the base stats here now though, HP relatively right in the middle, maybe skews a little lower than I would have liked overall, where you can see she is kind of amongst other units that tend to have some sort of evasion or barrier or some kind of mechanic for survivability, and she doesn't really have as much of that. She's got some, but we'll see more soon. Oh, when we get to the attack stat here, she is now one of the top tier base attack characters in the game, tied with four other units here for the highest attack, uh, worthy enough that I'm going to give her the spot on the presentation going forward. So 426 here, excellent base attack to start. We look at agility, skews definitely a little higher here too. 62 base agility, very, very fast where the total UR list of 120 tops out at agility of the 65 to 64. And you'll notice there is a pretty steep drop off here to 59 agility where she does have a nice head start from many other units in that regard. We'll talk more about agility though. There's something just kind of slightly misleading about this, but we'll talk about that more soon. Dexterity wise, she's actually surprisingly very, very low on the dexterity side of things, which, and I say that surprisingly because most lightning units are the opposite and they're very high crit rate units. She is not that kind of character, at least not from the base stat perspective, which comes into play later. When we look at luck though, she does end up kind of reverting back to the mean here, kind of right around in the middle of the average, nothing too crazy in terms of luck. Overall, pretty, pretty balanced there. Now we reconcile the base stats to the total analysis. So base stat wise, you know, attack and agility are the places that she genuinely really shines. But once you start putting in the extra board stats, the board percentage stats, the mastery nodes, things do start to shift just a little bit here. She does lose a bit of her ground on the agility side things compared to other characters, although they do recover her low base dexterity by giving her some good board dexterity. And if we're looking at the sources of that here, you can see from the agility perspective, they only give her two agility on the board. Most characters get around eight, and if you're lucky, you get upwards of 10. So the fact they gave her two is really what makes her lose ground in the total agility perspective, but that's okay. We're going to still keep talking about this on the report card. And the dexterity of 72 really does kind of help things that and ends up jacking up her dexterity to a point that's at least kind of salvageable. But overall, I wouldn't say there's any massive deficiencies here from a stat perspective. Now we look at critical hit and crit avoid. Now again, both of uh, these scale either directly entirely off of dexterity or luck. Critical hit rate, no surprise here. She's definitely on the lower side of things. And this is total stats. So this is not just her base stats, even total stats on the lower side. And then crit avoid, a little bit higher, but I wouldn't say it's a strength of hers by any means. Overall, again, relatively balanced. No big takeaways from this perspective. And just for anyone that wants to see the list comparatively, you can obviously pause and look here, but I don't have much to add from that perspective. When we look at accuracy now, though, uh, the blue line here is total innate accuracy, looking just at the luck, the dexterity, and then what they might have for mastery abilities. The green, which is the accuracy with passives, takes in your passive abilities into account. Now, she does have a main passive that boosts her luck by 12%, which will increase her accuracy. You can see that's why she ends up skewing a little higher here. But overall, she's basically average. The average and, and even the median of this list is 160%. She's at 162 uh, total innately. And then when you include the passives, she gets up to 170% and the average is 171. So she's actually like two percentage points lower than the average. But again, that average is kind of skewed by some of these uh, higher accuracy characters here at the end. But overall, the main takeaway, 
definitely needs a little bit of help in that regard. We'll talk about more about that on the report card. Now, evasion wise, there's a really important thing to remember here. Lightning at this time does not have its own 35% luck card. So when I look at this total max evasion, it takes into account 35% luck, 17% luck, and then the trust stone luck. Well, if lightning does not have the 35% and they're only relying on secrets of the heart, we're actually kind of overstating lightning's evasion at this moment in time. Now, once lightning does get that card, who knows when and inevitably how so, lightning is technically evade candidate like in rare instances but certainly not to be relied upon but it's kind of there which is more than you can say for most lightning units which finally brings us to the report card where i can finally put all of what we just talked about into something more concise now effective hp i'm giving her a b with an asterisk and i'll talk about why in just a couple seconds here the physical hp side of things also going a b and the magic i'm also going a b now i know her resistances do skew a little bit more toward the magic with 20 percent as compared to the two 10 percents on the missile and slash but her hp level is low enough that those don't make terribly material differences now there are a couple considerations here now she does have no innate defense and spirit or passives to increase either of those stats that's a big deficiency for many dps in the modern day and age but her main buff does add 25 percent slash and missile resistance for three turns so that's why i have the asterisk here and why i say that the effective physical can be competitive with the magic there's just too many variables here though that resistance it's only for three turns it's also dispellable so how long can you rely on it for this a lot to consider but overall she's definitely a little squishier than i would have liked i think i'm being generous with the b grade here but it's not the worst thing in the world her primary stats definitely an a stellar base attack she also has a follow-up attack kind of like noctis and Asius does which does attack damage too uh, 80 defense penetration with a her passive and the buff and she has some interesting ap mechanics which can sustain her damage uptime which overall is a fantastic thing and she has both slash and a missile attacks on the main job so when you're going against her that high attack stat's going to be utilized in both of those attack types which is hard to defend against many types of attacks when we get to the agility side of things i'm going a b but again with another asterisk here the agility passive can get her to 71 agility the average with passives is 67 so she is a little bit above average in that regard but one of her main buffs here early on is a 25 percent agility buff which gives her 15 agility for three turns which is a massive agility boost now again, that is only temporary, and that's why I want to make sure that we establish the agility as a B here, because throughout the majority of the battle, she's not going to retain that buff. But to start, she is definitely very speedy. But accuracy-wise, I'm going to C here. Uh, the accuracy definitely isn't great. It's her main weakness. But that same agility buff also gives her 30% accuracy to start. So it does start off the battle better, but obviously it can be dispelled and it does wear off. So as the battle goes on, that accuracy reverts back toward the C grade. So again, you still want to equip for it if you are seeing a lot of evasion units. Now, on that topic, evading, she is a C, definitely average, can potentially dodge one or two hits. But again, that is reliant upon Lightning getting that vision card. Without it, this is not a C. This is like a D or an F, probably an F. And then movement, overall a C. Base movement, no ways to increase or decrease it, nothing wrong with that. And as a snapshot to part two here, passives, I'm going B minus. It's not that they're bad. One of them is pretty decent, but they take a lot of passives from the Ranger and the Viking sub job, which just kind of like aren't that great of passives overall. They don't really make her stand out or do anything crazy unique from a passive perspective. They're good. They're not amazing. B minus. Counter abilities. I'm going B plus. She has a genuinely really good one here, which is part of that AP management that we were talking about. Kind of similar to Astrius where she can regenerate AP upon a counter attack. So I like that a lot. Overall kit, I'm going with a B. It's not that it's bad. It's just also not game breaking. She does her job extremely well. And I'm going to caveat this with the final grade here that I'm going with a B plus because she's sort of a, a physical tank busting glass cannon because her survivability comparatively to other top tier TPS is a little bit lower that gets made up for with many of her offensive potential options whereas we talked about slash type damage and missile type damage an immense amount of defense penetration her base attack has a 25 percent slash in peril her limit break gives her a 40 percent slash resistance penetration for three turns with in conjunction with the esther vision card means you can basically ignore all the slash resistance and all the defense and she's got such a high attack stat that she just 
constantly pounds out damage the whole time. So her job is genuinely just like do damage and kill things as fast as possible. And that actually incentivizes her. One of her abilities gives her AP upon killing an enemy. Overall, like it's tough to say that she does great in a majority of situations because she really just has like one job. And if she can't do that job, then I don't think she has a lot of utility outside of that to really bring to the table. But that's neither necessarily a good or a bad thing. Overall, I think B plus is fair. But that's the lightning review in a nutshell. Definitely interesting to put her into our current lightning comps because we do have some major differences from JP in terms of what we have for lightning potential and vision cards. And now we can play around with slotting different characters here. I am very intrigued to see how lightning plays into things. My guess is that she probably replaces Cloud in many instances but again they're two very different characters cloud obviously has a lot more sure hits and triple hits and, and chaining potential he's also got the reflex which is part of his survivability but they also overlap in that they do a lot of slash and perils both can potentially do slash and missile type damage so there is some overlap but they do things a little bit differently but that's it for now i'll talk a lot more about that in part two and part three and i'll talk to you soon